Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, and I'm excited that you're here with me today to hear about my Mohs surgery experience. And when I say I'm excited to be here with you today, that is the understatement of all time. It was a month ago yesterday that I had my Mohs surgery, and as many of you know, I've been playing videos through the month of December that I had pre-made in November, so that would give me time off to heal. And I am so glad to be here with you today. I had the Mohs surgery, and it is on this side, and I'll kind of go in here a little bit because right now it is bumped up and it is an incision. And I will say incision because I don't like the S-C-A-R word because S-C-A-Rs are permanent. And in the case of this Mohs incision, they do flatten out over time and it can take up to 10 months, something like that, for them totally to be invisible and blend into your skin again. But that will happen over time. I'm confident of that. And that is really the way the Mohs surgeries typically go. But I do want to say that this whole experience did not happen the way I thought it would at all. And I am really reminded being on YouTube that this isn't scripted TV and things don't happen the way we plan them. It's really more like reality TV and I'm like the little guinea pig here and I'm going through my life on camera. And in the case of this Mohs surgery experience, that is exactly what happened. Many of you know that I did do a video prior to the Mohs surgery where I talked about the skin cancer, which I was diagnosed with. And I talked about, you know, some warnings to you about using sunblock and that kind of thing. And really I thought this video was going to be more of the same, just more in depth about warning you about sun exposure and skin cancer because I had been diagnosed with basal cell carcinoma, which is the least invasive form of cancer and really the least serious form of cancer, but you do have to take care of it. Before I get into the specifics of the Mohs surgery and that experience and showing you all that, let me tell you in a nutshell what happened because it did not come down the way I thought it would at all. What happened, for those of you who didn't see the earlier video, and I will link that video below so you can see that, but what happened is that I had this funny little lesion growing on my face, uh, and it had been growing for about a year and a half, and I called a local plastic surgeon to make an appointment to get the little thing removed, and I was told by that receptionist that I needed to go to a dermatologist to make sure it wasn't skin cancer. So I made an appointment with a local dermatologist, and I went in thinking that it was a benign lesion. However, when I go into the office, the nurse takes off the makeup, the doctor comes in, she takes one look at it and leans into me, almost grabs my hands and says, you have skin cancer. And the blood just ran cold through me at that point and I thought, skin cancer? I've been wearing sunblock every day since my 30s. How can I have skin cancer? Well, she said that it was and she said Mohs surgery would be the best way to take care of the skin cancer. And she suggested that I might look around the internet to find a really good Mohs surgeon because I told her about the YouTube channel and she knew I wanted a very good result. So I did that. I looked around on the internet and I found a doctor in Spokane, Washington that had very good results. And he was certified as a Mohs dermatologist plus a plastic surgeon. And I thought that would be really good because he could not only take out the Mohs lesion, he could stitch it back up and make it very beautiful since he was a plastic surgeon. And when I called to set up the appointment with that doctor in Spokane, the nurse asked that I send the biopsy. And I said, well, my doctor here, my dermatologist didn't need a biopsy. She said it's skin cancer. And she said, I would not need one to get the surgery. And they said, you know, that's not how we do things in Washington. Maybe they do that in Kansas, but we have to have a biopsy. So I called my dermatologist nurse back and said that I needed a biopsy. And she said, well, we're very, very busy. And you know, I don't know if we can work that in. Let me talk to the doctor and I'll find out. And so she called me back Back and she said, well, the doctor said she would work you in, but she's super busy and so you can't talk to her, you can't ask her any questions. It's just in and out, get the biopsy and get out of there. And I thought that was a little strange, but you know, I was just grateful to have someone to do the biopsy to confirm the skin cancer to go on with the surgery. So what happened is that I got the biopsy and for those of you who would be worried to get a biopsy in your face, don't ever worry about it. Basically all they did was they took a little scraping off the top of it and then they sent it in to be examined and I think maybe I wore a Band-Aid for a day and then you know the Band-Aid came off and within a week you couldn't even tell really anything had happened. So don't let the biopsy worry you. The biopsy results didn't come back for two or three weeks. And in the meantime, I made that first video for you all and posted it and I called the nurse at two weeks and then I called her at three weeks and finally she called me back. And I said, you know, what were the results of the biopsy? And she said, well, the biopsy showed that you have a very rare form of skin cancer. And I did not have a pencil to write it down. I remember I was walking through the office and I was on my cell phone and I tried to remember the word she said and I asked her again. I could not remember that word. 
And I said, well, you know, that sounds serious. And she said, no, don't worry. You know, the Mohs will take care of it. It's just very important that you get that done. I remember I told Alan, my sister at the time, that I was concerned that she said I had this rare form of skin cancer. And the implication to me was that it was growing fast. And I went ahead and aired that first video that I had basal cell carcinoma because I really thought that I did. And then it got to be about two days before the surgery. And all of a sudden, I really started to worry about that, quote, rare form of cancer that the nurse had told me about. So I called her and I left a message on her voicemail that said, I'm flying off for that surgery in a couple days and you mentioned it was a rare form of cancer. Can you call me back and give me that big name? Even if you just get my cell phone, give me the big name of that again and also the spelling because I'd really like to look that up. And then I called the doctor in Spokane to make sure they'd received the biopsy that was supposedly faxed from the dermatologist's office. And the nurse got on the phone with me and she said, yes, we did receive the biopsy, but it's not skin cancer. And I'm like, what? What do you mean it's not skin cancer? And she said, well, it basically said that basal cell was ruled out, but it was one of two benign lesions. The first was a triblastoma, and this is what triblastoma can look like, and it is awful, so obviously you have to get that removed from your face. And the second is epithelioma, and this is a picture of what epithelioma looks like, which is like warthog face, which is really a scary thing to me. And so I asked her to ask the doctor, you know, what should I do? And he said, well, because both of the benign lesions still are serious and you wanna make sure they're all removed, I would still go through with the Mohs. So now I'll show you a little bit about the Mohs surgery process, starting in the hotel room the morning of the surgery. This is Friday, December 8th, and this is the day of my procedure. And I call it a procedure because I don't want to say surgery. So, you know, they don't put me out and surgery sounds difficult. And these procedures just end up taking what we don't want, which is this little funky thing right here. And also I have something that is growing on my lip after the biopsy, which kind of scares me a little bit. Well, uh, most does two major things for us. Number one um, is it gives us the highest cure rate of anything we can do to get rid of these lesions. Awesome. And it does that by using the microscope to go along. And for most tumors, it's a cure rate that's above 99%. Or most is curative, it really is. It, it takes care of it, never to be thought of again. Uh, the second major thing that it does is it keeps that hole as small as possible. Yeah. In other parts of your body, we may just cut around the outside edges with margins for sort of insurance to make sure that it's gone. And we don't right. want to do that on your face. We don't have any extra skin to spare. This is my sweet husband, Allie. Say hi, honey. Hi, honey. <laughs> he doesn't like to be on camera, but he is my wonderful support. It's 35 years of September, right, honey? I look a little tattered and torn, but I'm so excited to be on this side of it. And now what's happening is it'll take about 45 minutes. They have a pathologist here right on site and he's looking actually at both little biopsies that they took and they're going to determine exactly what this thing is. And so I have a big hole in my face now and what are you going to do now? So now we're going to do a little small flap closure where we uh, mobilize some surrounding skin to bring together to close those edges. Is there any way to minimize scarring? Yeah, there's some evidence that silicone-based gels, um, silicone sheets have some you know, improvement of scarring. If it's in an area where you can do Botox or Dysport around it, uh, you can immobilize the surrounding skin. And so there's good studies showing that wounds actually heal better. And it makes sense when they're splinted, when they're not moving. It's been three weeks ago tomorrow that I had the most surgery. And I am headed to Kansas City today to get the steroid injected in this to make it flatter. And as you can see, I'm going to try to move back to where you can really see it. It's a little hard to see in the lights, but it is still bumped up in this area quite a bit. And the incision goes clear down to, let me look in my mirror, goes clear down to here. It's a very long incision. It's about an inch and a half incision. And as you can tell when I smile, it is quite a bit more bumped up here. In fact, it does still have the feeling of being bumped up, even clear down along here. You can kind of feel it. And then you can see there that it is more bumped up along there. I still think it looks pretty good. Apparently, if the incision had been anywhere else on my face, it would have been largely flat by now and I wouldn't have needed the steroid. For the first few weeks after the surgery, it looked so bad and it was so bumped up that I could not even stand to look at myself in the mirror. I mean, it was, it was painful to go through that every day. In fact, I really kind of wondered if I could even continue to have a YouTube channel because it looked so horrible to look at. I thought, you know, there's no way somebody will want me to uh, show them makeup videos when they have to look at that incision. And I do call it the incision because I don't like the word S-C-A-R because the S-C-A-R tends to hang around, whereas an incision does heal and it can heal totally flat to the skin. And I will tell you a little trick about healing from surgery. And I learned this in my knee surgery and I'm going to do a follow-up video on my knee surgery. But basically what I learned, and I know this, but when you're going through it, it's really hard to remember. And I won't tell you about the knee surgery aspect of it because that gets into that whole other video, which I'll share with you in that video that is upcoming. What I learned is that 
maybe about two weeks after, I was still totally freaked out and totally scared to death and using the S-C-A-R word in my mind and really terrified about the whole thing. And then I realized that words are powerful and that our faith is powerful. So I had to make myself change my way of talking and change my way of thinking. I would immediately change any kind of negative thought and I would say, oh, it's healing beautifully. It's healing totally flat. It's going to look so beautiful. You're not gonna be able to tell anything. I got rid of that ugly mark on my face and it's going to heal just perfectly and beautifully. And that is how I am dealing with this now. And when I started doing that, and that was about a week ago, I have to say the first two weeks I was not good, but about a week ago I started doing that and I started to see major amounts of healing. And I was quite surprised at the results that I was getting at that point. Like this morning, Alan and I are going to be driving to Kansas City. Let me go ahead and put that on. There we go. And so that is really how I've been looking for the last three weeks <laughs> because um, he said that 24-7 wearing the silicone sheet would make a huge difference in the healing. And so even though it looks a little odd, I have been using the silicone sheet 24-7. Okay, that was a look at my Mohs surgery experience. And I will have to say it is really very difficult to see, but I still am definitely dealing with an imperfection here. And it is flattening out as we speak, hopefully and it will flatten out over time, but it can be up to 10 months before everything is totally back to normal. But the idea behind the Mohs incisions is that they're so fine and so well done that in time they really look about invisible. And I'm hoping that I will have that good result. In fact, thank you God in advance for my perfectly healed face. Now, I have certain takeaways from this. The first is that I wanna tell you that this was not easy to go through. And here I am uh, kind of with a dressed up party looking face because to me, I want to celebrate being able to be back on YouTube because I got afraid along the way. You know, you see yourself with a big incision on your face and you worry and you know, you, all those things go through your head that it may not heal. And I think it's healing very well and I think it will continue to heal. And in fact, these wild earrings, I bought the night of the surgery in Spokane. Alan and I went to a movie that night and it was in a shopping mall and afterwards we weren't looking around at the stores and Macy's had some great earrings on sale and I think these were like $7. And I vowed to myself that I would get through this surgery and that I would heal well, and that in a month or so, I would be back on the air with you all, and then I'd be wearing my party earrings. And although this video turned out differently than I thought it would, I thought this would be a warning about skin cancer and that kind of thing, I do have some takeaways from this that I think are valuable. The first is, don't ever let anyone tell you you have cancer without getting a biopsy. Looking back, I'm very angry at that dermatologist because if she just said, you know, it looks like it could be a basal cell carcinoma, but let's go ahead and get it biopsied to make sure, then none of this would have happened. She so the important thing is, even if you get one opinion from a doctor, don't let that be your only opinion. It's worth the copay or whatever to go and get a second opinion to make sure that everyone is on the same page about the best way to treat whatever your problem is. And the third thing is, even though I'm not very happy with the way I was treated by that particular dermatologist, it's just very important to add on to your pap smears and your breast exams and that kind of thing. It's important to add a yearly check with your dermatologist. If I had done that and they had caught this little thing a year and a half ago, I would have had just a little tiny incision to get rid of it. And so from now on, I have learned my lesson and I am going to the dermatologist every single year. That was my basal cell carcinoma experience that turned out not to be basal cell, which I have to say, thank you God, that it was not skin cancer. Because even though basal cell is the best form of skin cancer you can have, it's always better to have no skin cancer. Well, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And I've been using this little card deck from Louise Hay. It's the Life Loves You cards. So let's go ahead and see what God in the universe has in mind for us today to think about. Oh boy, and you guys, this is a wonderful video. To be back with you is fabulous. I've missed you. Ooh, I love this. I welcome miracles into my life. I welcome miracles into my life. Be open to miracles today. You will experience a miracle each time you decide to let life love you a little bit more than before. I love that card, ladies. And you know, I do want to let life love me. I feel like life has been beating me up with this face thing for the past month. I like to be positive and tell you how great everything is, but I have to say this has been really, really a hard experience to get through. It's been hard not to do videos. It's been hard to look at myself in the mirror, but I still believe that God does not give bad gifts. 
and that this whole experience, maybe it was there to benefit some of you. And in fact, after I did that first video, several of you said that they had suspicious areas that they wanted to have looked at and that they'd made an appointment to go to the dermatologist. And that made me so happy. And you know, I am ready to let life love me more and to let those miracles in. And ladies, I hope you are too. There are miracles all around us if we just open our eyes and open our ears and open our hearts and listen. Life really does love us and we're worth loving. We're not perfect. We struggle along. We learn lessons as we go, but let's open our hearts and let life love us a little more each day. That way we can have an even better second half. Take care. See you next time.